It's been sunny on the Osable, uh, at least today it was, and the forecast is for sun. And that can make the fish a little hesitant to rise. So before hatch time or early hatch time, you know, through the lunch hour, uh, we've been passing the time by fishing a drying dropper um, and catching a few fish doing it. And as often happens, I gotta replenish my box. So that's where the video is coming from. So I was gonna tie anyway. Um, this is a really nothing more than a CDC soft tackle, but I use um, turkey uh, tail instead of um, pheasant because the Hendrickson nymph has a little bit of a splotch to it in the abdomen and the turkey has a little bit of splotch to it. And so why not make a beet head borchers, which is what this ends up being. So I use pheasant tail for the tail because it's just perfect for it. And then I use a clump of turkey and put it, that's what secures the bead. Like everything I tie, I try to make sure it can be tied quickly. Um, and then we're gonna secure this with copper. I just love copper in the spring. It's just the color of the water seems to make it copper or a black nickel, my two favorites. This one I'm gonna use copper, but you can make an argument for either. I'll probably catch fish on either. And I'll come back through with my copper wire. And you can see how there's just a little bit of splotch to that turkey a little bit of sheen up front and pretty good bulk. The Hendrickson nymph is not a small nymph. I'm gonna put just a little tiny bit of flash. I think you can really overdo it, especially when the water's clear. This is just a little turn or two right there. And then we'll take some CDC. And, uh, okay, so this is how I do it. It's probably not the way everyone does it. <laughs> Maybe I'm the only one that does it this way, but I wrap, I wrap my CDC and then I clip it. Um, hackle pliers are recommended, but not in use for this video. This is like how a lot of my fly tying happens, especially during this season or back when I was guiding a bunch is just, <laughs> You know what basically needs to be done, so just get it done. It's not fancy and it's quick. And then I'm gonna just kind of tuck it back. I think CDC outproduces partridge in this application. You could put a hot spot here, but I'm so paranoid about how clear that water is right now that I'm going sparser than I normally would. Um, this fly is, I'm tying it to, to sit right underneath the dry fly I'm about to tie, um, but would be fine fished on the swing or as the dropper fly in a Euro rig. I'm not afraid to clip CDC, but I do try to leave it a little uneven. Um, I think they call that buggy. All right, so that's the first half of my tomorrow afternoon setup. And then here comes the second half. So because you're fishing a 2.8 millimeter tungsten bead, not any old Hendrickson will do. So we're gonna beef it up a bit. Now you'll notice a lot of times when I, when I'm really got selective fish and I'm matching the hatch, I'll switch to pink thread, but the, the point of this fly is to, yeah, you know, maybe a fish or two will come up and look at it, but I really want to make sure that I'm floating the nymph and this will. So I like this fly, it's a size just a 14. I'll fish this on five and throw the bead head on six floor carbon underneath it. So we're gonna use moose, which I don't usually use on Hendrickson's for the tail. 
but it just floats great and it's so stiff to hold up the back of that fly. Otherwise, um, the fly, the back of the fly sinks and you really just don't get a good profile um, dry fly wise or it just pulls under and sinks, in which case you're not really fishing a dry and dropper, you're just fishing two wets. So I'm gonna dub this up pretty tight. Key with dubbing is always to use less than you think you need to do and twist it on harder than you think you need to do. Let's build ourselves a nice taper. See, and you're just looking. Silhouette is key. I'm using just a dyed beaver. Okay, just a little clump. Sometimes when you use a natural fur, you can just kind of trim it to shape there, which I did. All right, now I'm gonna use uh, poly. There's really nothing fancy I'm doing here uh, except making sure my fly box is full. But I'm just gonna use some Dun Poly. I always tie it on like that, double it up, wrap it around. Again, this fly has two purposes, but the one thing it has to do is float that nymph. Now I'm gonna tie on some Dun Hackle. I didn't really have a saddle in my home stash that I liked. So I'm gonna use a pretty decent old neck I had laying around. Throw a little dubbing up front to sort of finish the silhouette of the fly and to cover up that thread. Fill up ahead, you just can't beat a parachute sometimes. And now we're gonna start up at the top and wrap down. Nothing fancy at all. These are two very simple flies that are made to hopefully pick up a fish or two um, through that riffle in front of you while you're waiting for a fish to rise and for the main event to happen. In which case, you really should um, either cut off that back fly or switch the nymph for a low lying dry. And then you can fish two dry flies, which is pretty effective. So that's the top. So I usually tie off the bend of the hook, go down 24 to 30 inches this time of year and dangle this fella underneath it. Top fly goes down, set the hook.